Hope you're having a good day today. Thank you for joining me once again. We are going to be looking at another account of Daniel praying today. It's Daniel's prayer in chapter 9. Today's hymn, it's the hymn, I Must Tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Appreciate it, Link. Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. Notice, in the first year of Darius. So, like a lot of places in Scripture, uh, Scripture does not always happen chronologically. It is completely possible that this, perhaps, this is the first year of Darius. So, the account of the lion's den, either that was real early on in his reign, or... Perhaps things are not chronological, not sure. Anyway, regardless, the, the account happened. The events happened. Daniel 9, verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Then I set my face towards the Lord, toward the Lord God, to make request by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And so we think about going to the Lord in prayer. Verse 4 And I prayed to the Lord my God, and made confession, and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. And I would simply ask you to consider the we nature of what he says in verse 5. We have sinned. It's very easy to point fingers. It would be very easy to point fingers if you're, if you're Daniel and you're a young man taken into captivity. It would be very easy to point fingers and say, well, Manasseh was wicked. Ammon, if I'm remembering correctly, whoever, who Manasseh's son, can't remember his name exactly if it's Ammon, wicked. It's real, it would be real easy to point fingers and say Ahab, wicked. Jeroboam, wicked. Rehoboam, wicked. It'd be very easy to point fingers and say, look at all, look at all of them. No wonder we're in the mess we're in. And Daniel says, we have sinned. We have sinned. We have to take ownership of our sins. And to think about the sins that had been going on, you might think about the state of Israel in captivity, things that were happening. You might think about the fact, how do you, how do you keep the Day of Atonement in captivity? How do you do that? How does the high priest go in once a year to the mercy seat in captivity? How do you do that? Looks like somewhere in not too, not too long before this, may have been when they lost the ark altogether. The glory of God departed. We have sinned. Read on. Down at verse, and I would, I would encourage you to read the chapter, to read all of Daniel's prayer. 
But down in verse 11, Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law, and has departed so as not to obey your voice. Therefore the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, the, therefore the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against him. The curse and the oath written in the law. Part of the people were on one mount, part of the people were on the other mount, and you have the blessings and the curses. If they would follow the Lord, blessings. If they turn from the Lord, curses. And Daniel says, it has happened exactly like the Lord said. We, we, we have sinned, and now we are bearing, we are enduring the consequences. It has befallen us just as it was written in the law of Moses. The curse has come to pass. That's what has happened, because we have sinned against him. We have to heed the warning of Scripture, don't we? Remember what Jesus says, They have that which will judge them. My words will judge them in that last day. And so many people will be, will be lost. And they will have to confess. It is, it is happening as it was written. That's the truth of it. Pardon my phone binging if you can hear that. A little further in the account. Now therefore our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications. And for the Lord's sake, Cause your face to shine on your sanctuary, which is desolate. O oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations. In the city which is called by your name, for we do not present our supplications before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God. For your city and your people are called by your name. And what an amazing thing it is that the Lord is merciful to sinners. That's what the Lord is. And Daniel and the faithful know it. Blessed is the man whom the Lord does not impute trespasses. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord forgives. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. And so we come to the Lord. We come to Jesus. And I would ask you, sometimes people will have trouble with this song, frankly, and other songs like it. They have trouble with the idea of praying to Jesus. I will simply say this. Jesus is deity. If we have... <laughs> he is God. He's not the Father, but He is God and He is deity. And if we have trouble praying to Jesus, we need to read the end of Matthew 28 and we need to read what has been given to Jesus by the Father. And we need to think about why it is that all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. Because we, may, we might ask the question, the authority to do what? Do you remember what Jesus tells those individuals when the paralytic man is let down? Pardon me, I know I'm going to a whole other, whole other passage. When the paralytic man is let down by those friends, and he says, take up your bed and walk. Or, no, pardon me, first he says, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And everyone around him says, Who do you think you are? Who does he think he is that he can forgive sins? And he says, That you may know that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins, I say, take up your bed and walk. The authority has been given to Jesus. And so we should gladly gladly say and obey what the hymn speaks of. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. 
I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Did you notice even in the passage, to look at the language that is used, just notice the phrasing. Now therefore our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplication, and for the Lord's sake cause your face to shine on your sanctuary which is desolate. Just think about that phrasing. Not, and for your sake, cause your face to shine, and for the Lord's sake, cause your face to shine. Think about that picture. And just think about, think about that, those terms, that phrasing, and think about the Godhead. And think about the pre-incarnate Jesus. He's there. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.